Okay. Derek Hamby versus well, not versus the W. Ray versus the Aces. Right? Uh, the, the, all, the, the, w, the W was also named in the lawsuit. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. it, and it's happened with yeah. more than one team. Yeah. Yeah. By the way. By the way. Phoenix is worse. I, I love I, I love that I love that they call it WNBA the W. That's a pretty dope. That's that's a pretty dope. Yeah. I, I love when they say they reference it as a W. Yeah. But yes, yes. All right. Um, because if you Chris, if you say if you say the NBA is like, hey guys, the N. Nah. No. No. Same. Same. Uh, okay. Like Ferris. Exactly. Hey, do you know the details of this? Do you want to break down the lawsuit? Uh yeah. So Dierica Hamby, um, I believe. Last year, last year, yeah, last year, she was pregnant during the Las Vegas Aces of Championship run. She's alleging gender discrimination due to her pregnancy and how they pressured her. Um, I don't know, they like they like they they promised her things. Things were promised. You know, money was supposed to be allocated to her daughter's private school and child care and you know, general you know, they they kind of ostracized her out of the team, denied her certain entries to certain parts of the organization. You know what I mean? And she did not, you know, like right here. So team housing, you know, that was supposed to help the family with child care during games and kind of that. I'm still sifting through the 18 pages. It's 18 pages long. So, OK, I got I got a few quotes here because yeah, we, yeah. we did. We actually did a video on this last year. Um when when she brought this up, I don't think she was a final. I don't think she was filing a lawsuit then, but she had she had talked about it, and we did a so, video. So here it is. So she, so she filed it, and then mm-hmm. a couple of like last, I think a couple of weeks ago, she was given the green light, the ready to sue. Like you can you can now sue them. You filed right, it, right. and now she. That's why now it's in lawsuit form. You know she filled out all the paperwork, put all the motions in. They reviewed it, and they're like, okay, th- you're ready to sue them. And then she hit the green button on. Suing, you know what I mean. So now, yeah, yeah. So, so this this um this account kicks at at kicks on Twitter says during a phone call between Coach Hammond and Derrica Hamby on January fifteenth, twenty twenty three, Hammond asked her asked her whether she planned her pregnancy. When Hamby responded that she did not, Hammond told him Hamby that she was not taking proper precautions not to get pregnant. And I remember we talked about how you know yeah. Hammond, you know, we, we talked about like just women getting pregnant in, in, in sports and whatnot, um, how they're treated. And um, it, this, the, the, this story does not look good. Uh, it says during the same call, Hammond questioned Hamby's commitment and dedication to the team, telling mm-hmm. her that she was a question mark. Um, Hammond further stated that Aces needed bodies and that Hamby wouldn't be ready to play in time for the start of, the, of the next season. And I remember this, like she was, and she, she uh, assured them that she would be ready to go. Um, but, you know, she was la- labeled as untrustworthy and, you know, can't, re- you know, not reliable and things like that. You also know, they, too, they, they, they bullied her. Yeah. They withheld promised tuition relief to her daughter's school and allegedly forcibly removed her from team provided housing. And then she asked them, did you trade me? Cause I was pregnant. And yeah, and Becky Hammond never denied that accusation. Right. Um, yeah. I also want to add this because you know Derek Hamby isn't just some just some player. Like she's no. dope, right? They said nah. the Aces proceeded to trade Derek Hamby to the Los Angeles Sparks this season. She's averaging nineteen point four points and ten rebounds. Yeah. Yeah, because she starts. She starts on the Sparks. Unlike Owen Vegas, she came off the bench. She was the the I think the sixth woman of the year uh, when she was with with her. And yeah, she the, got a yeah, lot of yeah, rotation. The Aces are stacked. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, she's a she's a great player. You know, they call her big guard, right? Because she's she's a big who can handle the ball and come down the lane. She can start the break. She can ignite it, and she kind of changed the way the Aces played when she was in because she she can grab a board and go forward. She doesn't have to pass it to Kelsey Plum. You know what I mean? Right. She can you know take it and take it and go. Uh, you know now you know Alicia Clark kind of took the six man role from her. But yeah, yeah. Then he says she alleges uh, they broke promises because. She became pregnant and eligible to play the rest of the season. They absolutely did it. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely what happened. You know, so the d- WNBA uh, Players Association requested an investigation in tw- January 2023 following the trade. They opened up the inquiry. Then in May, they announced the investigation was over. 
they found out that the Aces violated for impersonable player benefits because, you know, the, the promise of the tuition. That's, you can't do that. You know what I mean? So they took yeah. away their first round pick for 2025 and then they suspended Becky Hammond for two games without pay. Mm-hmm. That was the punishment. Mm-hmm. That was the punishment by the WNBA. But this, this is, this is like you got to shove out some money because this is workplace discrimination to the T. Uh-huh. You know, based on sex, really. You know what I mean? You know, because she's a woman and got pregnant. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Uh, thoughts, B? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree. I, I believe they did it. And like Fair said, you know, this is not a uh, something that's limited to the Aces. Uh, mm-hmm. This is going on with Phoenix as well with uh, Skylar Diggins-Smith. Smith. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. in Phoenix, she was pregnant. They traded her. To, they she was traded to Phoenix. I think she played a couple years in Phoenix. And the year she was pregnant, they basically like the big gist of it was they basically told her you can't use any of the facilities. You're banished. Basically, they literally denied her credentials. You know, they did kind of just like shoved her away. You know what I mean? And their their coach was being all snippy and all nasty about it. You know, it's like you know, like you know. Because it's like she got pregnant, yo. You know how and many you know how many mothers are in the M- WNBA for like since the Cheryl Stroops got pregnant, came back and won four straight NBA championships. Yeah, and and look, the the, the whole thing is uh, you are not. It's a terrible look. Period. Uh, mm-hmm. One, you know, obviously it's illegal, but then it's a terrible look the way you treat your players, and you as a league. Uh, and we we've talked about how how much they've been growing over the last several years, uh, how entertaining it is. You know how uh, they have so many great players coming into the league, uh, but you are as a league are not in a place where you can alienate top talent like this. Because uh, coaches in the chat asking if we knew that Gabby Williams from the French team yep. used to play for Chicago, yeah, uh, and now she plays overseas, right? Yeah. And the the thing is, they, they were talking to uh, Diamond De Shields. Uh, the other day, or yesterday, yeah. asking her, you know, about women who decide to go and play over in Europe, and he's like, "Yeah, it's the wages. Uh, you know, they don't pay us enough." And you know, and she was saying that she didn't have any anything against any anybody who would go overseas to to make that money. And mm-hmm. hopefully, once the wages change in the WNBA, you know, maybe some of those players can come back and all that. So again, you're Absolutely. you're not in a, a place where you can kind of try to clamp down on your on your workforce like this. They have other options. Uh, and and better options, if we're being honest, right now. Uh, yeah, man. You you need to be all about these players, these, and these women who who are fantastic ambassadors for the game, uh, who, who who put their heart and soul into building up the W, and you kind of turn around and you're kind of cutting them off at their knees. It's yeah, because um, because Brianna, um, so Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi played on the same team in Russia with Candace Parker back in the day. They were all being paid a million a year. Mm. A million a year. They, like, yeah. Deanna, there's an entire podcast about this team because it was actually end up, it was owned by like some like Russian spy who was like in some espionage that got murdered. It's actually a great podcast. You should listen to it. Um, yeah, they're, they're being paid a million a year by this like Russian spy for this team. And, and the highest paid player in the WNBA now, now, not back then, now, makes a quarter of a million dollars. That's why Gabby Williams is playing in overseas. It's one is the because she would she would prioritize a WNBA absolutely if they paid her more than the French team or the Turkish team that she plays for absolutely. And that's why Gabby Williams hasn't played in the WNBA for like I think about a year and a half due to the prior to, to prioritization. Probably, that's a big word. Um, Prioritize, prioritization. Yes, rules. Because if you don't show up by training camp or in the last day is May 1st. If you don't show up by May 1st, that's the last deadline. You end up getting suspended for the entire year. And that's why Chicago, that's what Chicago did to Gabby Williams. Suspended her for the entire year. That's why she'll never, ever play for the Chicago Sky. Ever. And she's public with her disdain about it because Angel Reese asked her, like, hey, come back to Chicago and play with me. And she was like, girl, I love you. I'll play with you. Not on that team. Publicly saying, I will never play for that team because of what they did to me. But that wouldn't yeah, have happened if you paid her similar wages now not even more similar because a lot of these or if you just didn't screw her for for making money elsewhere exactly right yeah like let her show up a week a week late 
gives a damn. You you weak late. I get Gabby Williams on my team, and you're weak late. I don't care. Gabby Williams is one of the best basketball players on planet Earth. The problem is no one talks about her because she plays in she plays in Europe, and no one watches. That they, there's no broadcasting deal for them. You know what I mean? We we don't. You know, I'm you know like Brianna Stewart played for Fenerbahce in Turkey, and it was like it was packed, packed. Everyone's showing up to it. You know. They treat it like a like a like a like a soccer game, you know, flares and having fun and just you know just but watching sports. They don't care if women are doing it. A sport is a sport. We're watching sports. Let's go watch some sports. Yeah, yeah. You know. All right. So I mean, do we want to put up a poll for this? I think this is pretty open and shut. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I I put the poll together already, so we're gonna put it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's do it. So I mean, it, it's essentially who are you siding with here? Uh, hashtag Hamby or hashtag W? Okay. All right. Season comes back in two days, by the way. uh, Oh, I think it's tomorrow they start. No, tomorrow. Two days was yesterday, my bad. One day. Put in the hashtag Hamby or hashtag W. All right. Who you who you siding with there? Um, WNBA is is obviously it's it's more popular than it's ever been. It's going to get even more popular, and um, you know when it happens, stories like this, these are going to pop up. That's that's any sport, right? But Mm -hmm. it, it just shows you the ugly side of of things, um, even something like this, which it's been all positive news up until this point, but this definitely puts a damper on things. And, um, it, and, and we raised this question a year ago. We talked, uh, you know, I might put that link to that, that video, but we talked about how women are treated, you know, how pregnancies are treated, uh, in, in women's sports and how they're viewed. Right. Like, you know, some people, some people look at it and say, yeah, you know, she did kind of let her team down cause she got pregnant, but, you know, it's not like every year comes around. And she's like, "Hey guys, I'm pregnant again. Can't play, <laughs> right?" It's not. It's not. It's, it's not one of those things, right? Um, I don't think she. I don't, she didn't miss any real time at all. It was. It was think. at the end of the season. She missed playoff games. Yeah. Okay. And, and I can understand. It, I can understand. Yeah. You're like, man. Like we could have used you there. I. I, I get it. Right. Mm-hmm. But again, it wasn't planned. Okay. It's not like she was doing it every year. Right around that time. Okay, she was she was ready to go the next season. And, and listen, the people who complain about that, you have PTO at your at your job and you use it whenever you want. And don't tell me it's different because they're not making the money the men are making, so it's not different at all. Not for them. Yeah, they're, they're, they're <laughs> yeah they're making like our wages. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you know some of them are making our wages, so it's not like yeah, like you know, like I said, a quarter of a million. That's the max. You know, mm-hmm. some doctors get that. You know what I mean? And not all. No, that's an ex- that's an excellent point, though, B. That's an excellent yeah. point. They don't make enough for you to have the type of expectations for them. No. Right. No. You, you, they don't make enough for you to 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 talk about them the way you talk about male athletes and expecting them to just put their entire lives on hold while they're playing for your favorite team. Uh, I mean, it's ridiculous in in male sports as well. But you, you don't even have the argument of oh, well, they're making millions of dollars to play a game because they're not. Mm-hmm. Oh, and also too, like men can't get pregnant. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you know, like you know. I, mean, th- I saw a movie where Arnold Schwarzenegger did, so I'm not sure if okay, you're okay. really oh, on point, that. Point, <laughs> on point with that. Um, okay, my bad. I think no, uh, like, I think, you know, I think people... Stallone did in one as well. Uh, so okay, I, so you know. I didn't know. I didn't know. So. Also too, like my thing is this: like you know, like like you know how mad you get with Kawhi Leonard and all the people with load management, and you're like, man, what the hell? Up with this, you know what I mean? She literally said, "Like, yeah, I got pregnant. I'll be ready for next year. I'm playing next year. All oh, like, I'm playing." You know what I mean? Kawhi Leonard be like, "Nah, I'll play 40 games next year, and then I'll show up for the playoffs if we make it far enough. Kawhi, I still probably won't show up." He said, "I'll see you when I see you." Oh yeah, he also, basically, I'll see you when I see you. It's just, it's just, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a matter of tactfulness too. Because yes, people are going to think that, right? Mm-hmm. People are going to think that, right or wrong, coaches, because you know. Hammond is is one of those coaches that you know she's heartless. Let's just be real about it. She's heartless. You're gonna get people like that, um, but it's still a matter of how you approach it. You might you might be thinking, oh man, like she did this when we needed her. Man, can I trust her? Uh, can't treat her that way, right? You gotta kind of bite your tongue. And if you feel like this is a a, a continuing problem, then you quietly just make the trade. Why do you have to go through all that? Telling, telling teammates not to talk to her and all that stuff. Like you, 
Like this is like first of all, you don't control anybody. It's a job, right? But why do you feel like you have to you have to you know embarrass her, you know put her down instead of just trading her? Because that's that's really what it comes down to. Hey, I just, I, I don't think I can trust her. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna trade her, and that's all you have to do, and keep it moving, and then you don't have any of this stuff, right? But doing that extra stuff, it, if it's it's that sense of I want to be in control, mm-hmm. right? And you're gonna do what I tell you to do, and so is the team. Nah, can't have that. Can't have that. And Becky Hammond, who I think she's a uh, excellent coach, no place for her in the, in, in, in the W. Yeah. 